Hey there, YouTube. Myron Golden here, and I am here with my friend Rick the Wealth Coach. Rick, good to have you here. Top of the afternoon to you. How are you, Myron? I am utterly fantastic, thanks. So, I uh, had a, the privilege of spending the last four days with Rick at a conference in Puerto Rico. We flew down on a private jet and um, had some really, really good conversations, and I was really blown away by his understanding and insight that he has into creating wealth. And so he is going to be here today to share with us some of those principles. Sir. Sure. All right, Rick. So tell us exactly what do you do? What does it mean, Rick the Wealth Coach? What do you do for people? So what I do is I help create legal, lawful, lasting legacy. Okay. But what I really do is I get people to change their aim. <clears throat> you know, the problem with most people, Myron, the biggest challenge that we face in life is that not that we aim low, you know, that we aim high, I should say, and miss, we aim low and hit. Mm. So I get people to look at life like, you know, how can I have enough money so when I'm gone, everybody's taken care of from generation to generation to generation. So that's what I do. I, I set up trust for people. I set up programs. I set up uh, financial programs and financial management programs that make sure that the family is able to eat off the leftovers. You know, like, mm. you know how good leftovers I'm at. You know, <laughs> yes, you know, leftovers the second, are epic. Second, third, you know, mama's leftovers. One hundred percent. Second, third, and fourth, they always taste better. The second and third day, so the money. You should have some leftover money. That's what I help. That part. Do. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I know one of the things you talk about is the difference between prosperity and posterity. So what is the difference between prosperity and posterity? First of all, there's no song for prosperity. Mm. Posterity got a song. We the people. In order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. So ain't no song for prosperity. <laughs> posterity. So what's the difference? The difference is Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who found some treasure. Mm -hmm. And he realized the treasure was in a field. Right. So he said, what the heck? I don't want to take no chances. I'm about a whole field. Mm. And that way I guarantee myself to get the treasure. That was a really good insight. I don't want to take any chances. I'm going to buy the whole field. The whole field. I don't want to buy part of it, and then the part I buy, it ain't there. Come on. I'm going to buy the whole thing. Yeah, I want guarantees. Come on. Okay. All right. So the idea of posterity is that if you shoot for posterity, then prosperity is just a byproduct. Mm. Gotcha. Because you're not aiming at just handling your business. You're aiming at making sure that everybody behind you is okay. So your aim is different. It matches Proverbs 13 and 22, which says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, and a good man leaves a heritage to his children's children. So mm. when you're thinking about posterity, you don't even consider yourself good until your grandkids is rich. So it changes your whole aim with the way that you're aiming money, if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. It, it reminds me of what Jesus said about um, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Where rust and moth does corrupt, and thieves do break through and steal. Mm -hmm. But rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, nor thieves break through and steal. And a lot of people think that because the scripture says, "Lay not up for yourselves treasures," lay not for yourselves treasures upon the earth, but we're not supposed to lay them up. Mm -hmm. But apparently, I'm supposed to lay them up for my children yes, sir. and my children's children. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Yes, sir. Well, you said it right. A layup. <laughs> lay them up. You see, when he, when he, when he do a layup, a layup, the kids can just come on and what? Slam dunk. Because okay. you, you laid it up, you laid it up, you laid it up above the rim. Mm. And so you made it easy for them. Our kids are supposed to have so much money until they, they do slam dunks off a trampoline right over the rim. And all we do is just uh, lay, the, lay the ball up right over the rim and let them do 360. Mm. So you believe that it's a parent's job to set their children up for success. Absolutely. Uh, compound of wisdom. You know? mm. compound. Our children need to be wisdom heirs. Mm. You got to be a wisdom man before you can be a millionaire. One hundred percent. So we got to teach our kids wisdom because a fool and his money is soon to depart. We uh, we all know when person when people hit the lottery, the lion's share I'm broke in two years. So you got to train your kids about money, and it and it can't be sitting around like it's taboo or like it's something wrong with it. It's, it's right. incredibly important. Right. And it's really interesting. Like, in it, you have to you have to strike a balance when you're training children. And you're t not teaching, you don't want to teach them that it's taboo, but you also don't want them to have an entitlement, life owes me something because I'm here attitude, even though you're setting them up, you still have to make them work. So that, that's where people have a hard time. They think you can't do both, but you can do both. Oh, absolutely. And it's vital that we do because if, 
Like we just got through saying, a fool on their money or something. Some, the Some people's children sitting by, they waiting by the bed right now. Say, so you ain't dead yet? <laughs> wow. I'm going to hurry up. Wait, would you please die? I got, I, I got a 15-minute plan for that money. It'd be going wow. in 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to educate the children so they can understand that it's a privilege to serve. And everything about life is about sustainability. Mm. You know, that's what posterity that's what, is about. Like, like life is sustainability. It reminds me of what Jim Rohn said. He said, life is um, an exercise to keep death as far away as possible. Let's go. A <laughs> yes. to the men on that. Let the, let everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Everybody say amen. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So... Um, now that we have a, a little bit of a grasp on that, um, what is the difference between a a um, a write off and a tax credit? Oh, that's a really good question, and uh, so almost everybody's familiar with writing something off. Sure. So a write off means you just get back what you spent. Right. But wealthy people, the way the wealthy people, the one percentiles, the way the one percentiles operate is through tax credits. Mm -hmm. So. The best way I believe everybody should uh, look up a tax credit is just watch when President Trump was rerunning for office. And he was having a conversation with Biden. And so the facilitator said, hey, Trump, we heard you only spent $750 in federal income taxes in 2016. Mm -hmm. So at first, Myron Trump started, to, he tried to skate around the question. At first, he skated, he did the big wheels, and he did the crazy legs, and all of a sudden he just came clean. He said, man, he said, I don't pay taxes. He said, matter of fact, you'd be crazy to be paying some doggone taxes. He said, we're from the private sector, all right? Mm -hmm. He said, and we don't believe in that. He said, we avoid that like the plague. You know, he said, matter of fact, I get tax credits. And that went <laughs> right over the head. The whole mm -hmm. populace listening, they, they never seen what a tax credit is, so they know what he's talking about. So he spent $120 million for a hotel, but they gave him $885 million just for buying it in tax credits. So a tax credit is a multiple of the money you spend. And if you operate out of our type of trust, our unincorporated trust, our bookkeepers and our accountants, they know how to do what's called credits as opposed to just debits. See, a write-off is a debit. Mm -hmm. you know, but a tax credit is money, multiples of your money returned back. And it's a big difference between getting multiples back. And it's equivalent to Solomon because Solomon said, cast your bread upon the waters. And the it says, it's 11 and 1. After many days. It, it, it shall return after many days. In other words, it circulates. Right. So all of us who get tax credits, we got our own dance, Myron. It's time for the circulator. <laughs> it's time for the circulator. Uh, it's time for the cir Say what? Can you get with me? It's time for the circulator. <laughs> our money circulate, man. We don't want no write-offs. We want our money coming back in multiples wow. because it takes too long just writing stuff off. Are you picking up what I'm putting down, as you so eloquently say? I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yes, sir. I'm picking up what you're putting down. So, okay, so talk to me about the different kinds of trusts. Okay. So you said, because you, you said something about we do unincorporated trusts, so, which means you used a, an adjective to describe the trust, yes. so, which means there are other adjectives that describe other trusts. Correct. Okay. okay. So you have a... Um, most people have a living trust, mm -hmm. but it's really a dead trust. Okay. Okay, because the only way somebody gets some money, somebody got to die. Okay. All right, so, but you know how people are? I can't sell nothing running around talking about, hey man, you want a dead trust? You're like, ah, right. what you the Grim Reaper? What you mean, right. do I want a dead trust? So that would turn people off. So the words that people hear is what makes them make decisions. So a person say, yeah, but I, I don't want my stuff going to probate. So a living trust is good because it won't, your stuff won't go to probate. Okay. You know? So there's a term called abeyance, not obeyance but abeyance. Mm -hmm. Abeyance means the amount of time that your money is being held and, and it's not entitled with anybody. Mm -hmm. And there are billions of dollars in abeyance right now mm -hmm. because most people don't have a trust at all. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that when they pass away, they may have a will, which mm -hmm. means that their money will go to the probate court. Mm -hmm. So probate court, the probate judge, the probate attorney, and the IRS, they chop up most people's money. I mean, a lion's share of the human population's money goes to probate court, goes to a probate judge, and goes to the, the eye to IRS, that unwanted child, the mm. iris, iris, you know, that, 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 that child, that adopted child, everybody got iris, okay, yeah, so iris. Right. So the IRS, iris, um, she comes in and she just snatches up your stuff. For example, we have the Black Panther, that young man, that, that young man passed away and his estate was worth 3.8 million. Mm -hmm. He gave one point, they, they took 1.3 million out and gave it, just gave it to the probate court, the probate judges and everybody else and they only passed, passed his family 2.5 million. James Brown estate, it was in probate for what, 
about 17 years. Uh, it was an abeyance, not obeyance now, mm. abeyance for 17 years. A good book for people to get would be Black's Law Dictionary, the 11th edition. Yep, I and, have it. And um, it is an amazing book. And it has terms that you'll never hear in, uh, in, in, in the regular world, or when I say the regular world, the average, you know, average person's vocabulary. Because the average person speaks in legalese. Legalese means that you say things, but that word doesn't even mean that word. Mm. You know, for example, in law, the word understanding means that I agree, accept, and acknowledge something. That's what the word understanding means in law. So ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if you don't understand something and you sign some papers or something, then you still got to be liable for whatever happened. So that's why it's more important to get an unincorporated trust because a living trust will keep you out of probate court, but it doesn't pay you. It doesn't have any tax. It can't give you any tax credits because it is incorporated. It's not unincorporated. Let me give you an example of what I mean. When you have something that's incorporated, the word corporation means corpse. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's an let me give you an example. It was a preacher, and um, he opened up a Christian school. So he said, man, they told him, they said, hey, is, is, that, is that school certified by the state, those teachers? So the preacher was like, no, nah, they're certified by God. They was like, we, ain't, we don't care about God. We're concerned about, are they mm -hmm. certified by the state? So he's like, that's, that's cold. He was like, so you're going to have to come to court about this. So he went to court, and, um, and somebody told him, you ain't going to win in court. And he said, why is that? He said, because you're a corpse. That's a corporation, a, that, that, that nonprofit thing you got. That's a 5013C. That's a corporation. So he said, when you get in court, they basically going to tell you what to do because it's a maritime court, and you don't really have no rights. Because when you're a corporation, you don't have rights. You just got privileges. Mm -hmm. So he went to court, and the judge said, hey, what you got? He said, I got a 5013C. He said, what you doing? He said, don't teach us, are they certified by the state? He said, no. He said, I, I should have the right to. He cut him off. He said, you ain't got no rights in here, all right? You have no rights in here. You got a right to be up, be quiet, sit over there in that corner. And then the judge said, he fined him $289,000, closed the schools up, and, and his, new, his new child, Iris, all right, closed the school up for all the kids, and Iris gave all the money to one kid. Iris took all mm -hmm. that money. Iris and the court took this man's $289,000 and dissolved the school and just, you know, ruined um, it's a good thing that he had going on. Mm -hmm. So if he had went in there with an unincorporated trust, mm -hmm. first of all, they had never been in court because you can't sue him because everything is owned by the trust. So he would have never even been in court in the first place because it's impossible to sue us with our assets that's in the court because, and, uh, with our assets because we don't own assets. We control them. Mm -hmm. So everybody that operates out of unincorporated trust cannot be sued. It's impossible because the money is not in the person's name or the business or the, whatever it is that they're doing is not in the person's name. It's in the name of the trust. So he could open up that school out of his, and paid the money for everything out of his unincorporated trust and would have never had to be in court. Never. They could have never sued him. And all of everything that he was paying for out of the trust, all the books and everything he was doing for the kids and stuff, say, say he spent you know, 250 by the end of the year, mm -hmm. he would have got back multiples of that money uh, and uh, an equivalent of like a uh, million dollar tax refund on top of that on top of the fact that he couldn't get sued. So that's why we operate out of unincorporated trust and not incorporated, because um, we can't get sued and we get multiples of our money back that we spend. Wow, you said a whole bunch of stuff right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, Mara, I wasn't trying to say, didn't I blow your mind this time? I wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that, Myra, but you, but you asked. So I, 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 your I, I did ask the question. Yes, sir. Okay, so, wow, I, and I thought of a question when you were asking, when you were talking about all that stuff, now my, you got my mind racing down <laughs> seven different avenues. Uh, so, so you set up this unincorporated trust, mm -hmm. you get tax credits for the money that the trust spends, you, that's the question I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. You said, own nothing, and control everything. What does that look like? It looks like a shameless plug. Own no. nothing and control everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay, so you've got you've got your book, Control Everything, Own Nothing, Secrets of How the Wealthy Legally Avoid Taxes and Protect Their Assets from Lawsuits. Yes, sir. Okay. So the way well, the reason I wrote this book is because I went to meet I was buying a lot of real estate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got a I got a third partner in every deal I do. Iris. Iris. Right. She's, every time you turn around, she's there. Yeah, she won 30% of everything. So I'm like, I'm like well, you ain't do the deal. Right. All right? You wasn't in the room when we did the deal. Come on, you ain't signing the papers. Mm -hmm. You ain't negotiating. Mm -hmm. Ain't no blood sweat. You got no skin in the game. How mm -hmm. dare you just show up when it come time for the money and just take your little portion, Iris? I say, so it's got to be a better way. So I, I went to a meeting in Chicago, and I found out about an unincorporated trust. Mm -hmm. 
So I asked the gentleman, I said, hey, I said, Sid, I said, do you know anybody that's really got one of these? And he said, um, yeah, my friend Tim Brown. I said, Tim Brown, what, from the Oakland Raiders? He's like, yep. I said, well, how can I meet him? Because Tim did the foreword for my book. Mm -hmm. so I, I saw that. Yeah. I said, so I said, how can I, I said, how can I meet Tim? So you want to talk to him right now? I said, of course. So he, called, he took his phone out and he called Tim Brown. And uh, he's so humble, so nice, so kind. And uh, so I said, how you doing, Tim? He's like, great. Uh, I said, this is Rick. He said, yeah. He said, told me all about you. I said, can I come interview you? I said, and I said when are you going to be anywhere in the Midwest? He said, well, I'm going to be at the U.S. Open. I'm an honorary chairperson, me and Jerome Betters. I was like, all right. I said, uh, let's go. I said, when, when, when? So this is around 2019 we did this. Mm -hmm. So I went in and I interviewed him. It's on my YouTube channel, by the way. The oh, wow. So, so I went I'm going to go watch it. Yes, yes. I interviewed Tim. And what is your YouTube channel, by the way? Rick the Wealth Coach. Rick the Wealth Coach. Okay, go ahead. So, so I went and met Tim. And he said, Rick, I don't buy a hamburger unless I buy it out the trust. He said, people have tried to sue me. I'm a football player. He said, been, he said, they tried to sue all of us. He said, the problem is most of these other guys who don't operate the way I do, he said, don't you get it twisted. He said, all this fame and fortune stuff, people might be famous. They don't, they don't mean they're rich. Mm -hmm. That right? part. They might be famous. He said, and they are so susceptible to lawsuits. And they don't know anything about operating tax-free. That's the last thing I didn't even say anything about. So when you control everything, but you don't own it, you're absolved from taxes, too, when it's in an unincorporated trust. So the money that we make, every dollar that we spend out of, if I buy a house and sell it, I got zero capital gains. If I buy a if boat. If you buy a house or if the trust buys the house. Yeah, I'm sorry, buy it out of the trust. Okay. Yes. I li really like the way you said that. It's the trust that bought the house. Not Ricky, right, because I don't okay. own nothing to, to trust on. Well, so, I was just going by what your book says. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, st I stand to be corrected three times. So, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Thanks for that three-time that three <laughs> correction. So, yes, sir, to answer your question. When you make a purchase, so let's say, let me give you an example of what I mean. So, when most people buy a house, they try to figure out how in the world can I avoid some taxes? Mm -hmm. So, they either get like a self-directed IRA or maybe they buy, they use like a 1031 exchange. Mm -hmm. So. They're like, okay, so the 1031 exchange, so you got so many days, you got 45 days to locate a property, then you got 180 days to buy it, or else you're going to be liable for the taxes, okay? So that's the rules of a 1031 exchange. Okay. All right? So most people are like, all right, so they have to keep going through that every time they want to buy a house, but they just defer in the taxes. So you know how it is. Eventually, you're going to have to pay. And this is the one thing I can never understand about people, uh, Brother Myron. They would say, well, you know, later on, I'm going to be in a lower tax bracket. I say, what kind of financial plan is that? You plan on being a broker later on? Mm. That makes zero sense. Right. You're supposed to have more money the older on. we get. Yeah. yeah. Children's children money? Mm -hmm. Posterity? Mm -hmm. Why in the world would you aim at the ankles? Mm. What? You're trying to shoot people in the ankles? No, 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 no. If you're going to be rich, if you're going to be wealthy, then you've got to be thinking beyond you, which means that your moves that you make, they've got to be aimed at posterity. And that's what trust living does. That's why, that's why the trust baby's got the most money in the world. Trustees, we got more money than anybody on the planet. Trustees run, basically run the whole world's economy. Trustees, just look up John Pierpont Morgan. I, he has a book called The House of Morgan. And uh, it was one of my very first reads after I met Tim Brown and mm. went, went and hired me a staff. Once I found out what was going on, I went and hired me a whole staff. I said, we're we going to be doing trust for the whole world. I said, Tim, you tell me what's going on. The whole world going to find out. You know, I said, I'm going to teach everybody, everybody that, that want to be taught. So... The first book I started reading was The House of Morgan. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you a question. Are you familiar with COSAR 1, 2, 3, and 4? COSAR. No, never right. heard of it. So those are John Pierpont Morgan's yachts. No. COSAR 1, COSAR 2, COSAR 3, and COSAR 4. And he owned the Titanic, too. Mm. John Pierpont Morgan, mm -hmm. right? So when you see J.P. Morgan, Morgan right. right, John yeah. Pierpont Morgan. So he's a trustee. He was a trustee with several companies. Uh, his clients were the likes of the Rockefellers, the DuPonts and the Kennedys and all of them, these are the type of clients. They had a commercial bank mm -hmm. before they had a private bank before it became commercial. What's my point though? He was a trustee. Trustees run the world. Do you know that the bank, the director of a bank is a trustee? Mm -hmm. The bank, the bank director, he's a trustee. So what is a trustee? A trustee is a person that has a fiduciary responsibility between a beneficiary and himself. In other words, he looks out for the beneficiaries right. or the shareholders. So when you go into a bank, the, the president of the bank he all, he's always having a meeting with the Federal Reserve because that's a shareholders. In the World Bank, that's the shareholders. That's the people who own the banks, all the banks around the United States. Mm. And, uh, but you know who never been in a shareholders meeting? Who's that? Me and you. Mm. Any, your bank ever invited you to a shareholder meeting? Mm -hmm. No. That's because he's a trustee who's doing a breach of trust. All right? Because he has a fiduciary responsibility to you because he wouldn't have no money in the bank if you hadn't put it in there. All right? Another thing about a bank, banks get tax credits. Every time you go into the bank and make a deposit, 
they can they leverage your money and they can spend they can get ten times your money. So every time you put a thousand dollars in a bank, they can get ten thousand dollars back. And they start circulating that money. They know the they know the song. It's time for the circulator. Mm -hmm. This time they know the bankers. All of them. All, all the bankers know this. I be seeing them. I see them in there dancing. Uh, <laughs> in my mind. In my mind. I, I can see. Mind, I can yeah. see them in there dancing. Right. So they know the, They know it's time for the circulator. So they circulate that money. And people think they money in the bank. I'm like, bro, I went to right. the bank. Well, that's why it's called a fractional reserve bank, because they only keep a fraction of your deposits that's on reserve. A fraction of your deposits. So I like to do commercials, right? So mm -hmm. I like to go in and just get some lump sums of money. So I went in and said, give me $10,000. So the guy was like, I said, it's a problem? He's like, I said, man, you finna call security or something? What you doing? He's like, you want 10000 I was like, it's a bank, eh? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said uh, you, 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 um, hold on a second. Came from out the back. We can give you five. I said, what? He said, we can give you five today. I said, hey man, of my own money? He was like, what? what? But you know, we don't really keep that much around. Oh, that money is what? Circulating, Circulating right. So they, they out there building another co-sign, number one, two, three, four. Another thing about the banks, Myron, and, and you teach this and, and you're a very wise man for this. I'm amazed at people, they talking about I don't like to borrow money to make money. I'm like, who borrows the most money in the world? The banks. banks. How often are they open? Six days a week. Mm -hmm. What, to borrow what? Your money. Your, your money, exactly. All right. Cosar one, Cosar two, Cosar three, Cosar four. And they're borrowing it at 0% interest in most cases. Come on, and if you want to go in there and take a loan, I would charge you about 5%, something mm -hmm. like that. So this whole- Unless it's on the credit card, then they'll charge you more. Even more, correct. So, and they, and they make a multiple sum of money with the moves that they're making because they get tax credits. Mm. Ten, per, 10 times what it is that you uh, deposit is a tax credit. That's a mm. credit. All right. So people aren't used to the idea of multiples of their money when they put their money out. People are used to getting just the money back that they put out. But that's not Solomon's uh, game plan. Solomon said, cash your bread upon the waters and many days will come back to you. He said, give a portion of seven and another portion of eight. Because you don't know, baby, winter is coming. Right. All right. And what's going to produce you, this or that? Mm -hmm. Amen. So I believe in Solomon. I believe in his attitude about money. And uh, I know you teach a lot about King Solomon. I share, yeah. I share your beliefs about that. Uh, so that's my question about how you control everything and own nothing because the trust owns everything. It's tax free when you do business out of it and it produces tax credits. And we make money so much fat. We make, we make more money just circulating money than people make for a living. Mm. Yeah. So good. So, okay. Um, last question because we're going to need to wrap it up. So <laughs> here's my last question. Mm -hmm. How does one know how to choose his successors or her successors? Uh, that's a really good question. You, was, you was alluded to that a little earlier about making people feel entitled. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was going to choose a successor, I'd do it like First Samuel 16th chapter, if I was going to go. First remember, Samuel 16th chapter, yep, uh, right, David. Because um, it's time for Samuel to, to pick a successor, sure, sure. a successor. So he goes to Jesse's house, and uh, all Jesse's kids come out. Except and, one. Except <laughs> one, right? And Samuel say, man, he, Ain't none of these guys, they, they can't cut the mustard. They ain't ready for this jelly. Mm. All right, you got somebody else around here? So, so, he said, so he said, we got one more kid, baby. He in the back with the sheep. He's like, call him out. You know, he must be the man for it because he ain't nobody else here. Uh, they, they, none of these guys make the cut. So David comes out and God said, that's him. That's the one I want right there. So you think about why God choose David instead of all the brothers. Your successor, number one, got to be doing the dirty work. Mm. They got to be doing what everybody else don't want to do. Let's go. Right. So David and uh, he doing the sheep. His brothers like they out there doing electric slide and stuff, clowning around. While David doing some real work. Second thing about your successor is that your success to get. I say, <laughs> are you sure they were doing the electric slide? I, I ain't never been no more certain of nothing. <laughs> Ladies with an attitude. <laughs> you, you are so wild, bro. You are so, so wild. So his brothers, how we know they do the electric slide? Because they out there dancing around with Goliath out, you know, mm -hmm. Goliath out there threatening everybody. And they, brothers, they, they, they playing hide and seek. They can't, put, they can't put cheese on a whopper. They out there, they ain't gonna bust a grape in a tractor. They ain't, they ain't gonna do nothing, <laughs> all right? Until David show up on the scene. So a successor has to have, number one, they have to be, um, they have to be already doing what other people don't wanna do. Mm -hmm. And a successor got to already be managing something. Mm -hmm. He's out there managing a the sheep. Mm -hmm. Don't dare leave your money if somebody ain't managing nothing. Yeah. They already manage or something, you know, so your successor need to be a manager. And then the last thing about your successor is that he got to be different from the crowd. Mm. So David was extremely different from the crowd because he was learning all that great stuff out there with the sheep mm. away from his brothers. And he was a perfect person to pass a mantle on to mm. because he was used to being secluded. And he was used to making decisions 
opposite of the crowd. Yeah. So that's the way I would do my success. I would make sure, first of all, they're willing, to, they're willing to do the dirty work. They're willing to do what it is that I, that I suggest to them while we're alive, not no passing the money under you, and mm. we're not communicating on a regular basis. When mm. I was in Honolulu uh, for, for, the, for the new year, I sat my daughter down, and I had her to sign a successor thing. I said, honey, I said, uh, you want this money, right? She was like, well, yeah, put it like that, daddy. I said, hey, it's okay, money's a great motivation. I ain't mad at you. Okay, I said, you want this money, right? Okay, you're gonna go sign this saying that you're gonna come to all my financial IQ challenges. Mm. And that you're gonna do homework at every one of them. And you're gonna make the kids do homework. We got a deal? She's like, yeah, I say sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's so go. that's how we pick a successor. Mm. Good stuff, mm -hmm. good stuff. So, your book, mm -hmm. what else, do, how can people get in contact with you to learn more of what you know? You said something about a challenge. Yes, sir. Talk, talk to us about that, how people can find out about it, how people can get registered for it, and uh, what it is, all that. Okay, so it's called My Financial IQ Challenge. Mm. So My Financial, where we test your IQ. And we, well, we test your IQ about how to get, how to be tax free and how to get tax credits. So for most people, they had, they had the starting gate. Mm -hmm. they come in, most people. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about all my really rich friends when mm -hmm. they come in. Mm -hmm. Most of them at the starting gate. And, but it's for anybody, it's not for, you know, and you gotta be elite and all of that. Mm -hmm. Anybody can come and learn. Okay. So, so um, that's myfinancialiqchallenge.com. Myfinancialiqchallenge.com. Yes, sir. And, um, and I'm Rick the Wealth Coach on YouTube. Rick the Wealth Coach on YouTube. Got a, and they can go watch the video with the interview with you and Tim Brown. They can watch me and Tim Brown. They can watch me and Les Brown. Okay. You know, because we, we travel You're around. You're interviewing all the Brown brothers. Yeah, we, well, we travel around the world <laughs> to help people. You know, we just want to help people. You know? But bottom line is if somebody knows a crowd of people and they want to help them, then I get together and we help. Cool. So, so that's the idea. Good stuff, Rick. And uh, I'm also on Instagram as Rick the Wealth Coach as well. Good stuff. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Wow. Great stuff, man. Great conversation. Man, I love you, brother. You I'm a child. I believe in you. Give you the desires of your heart. If you let me. Man, I'm going to tell you this. If loving you is wrong, he, he, mind. That brother can sing, can't he? Uh, 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 Y'all see him showing out, don't if, you? If loving you is wrong, man, I ain't going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. I appreciate that, I man. I appreciate you, bro. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, guys, go check out Rich the Wealth Coach on YouTube. Check him out on Instagram. Subscribe, follow, join his My Financial IQ Challenge. Get his book, Control Everything, Own Nothing, The Secrets of the Wealthy. Like, take advantage of all the opportunities to increase your level of financial IQ and financial awareness so you can take better care of yourself and your family. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video and uh, hit the notification bell and any other YouTube -y stuff I'm forgetting. I know I'm forgetting one more YouTube -y thing, but whatever that thing is, you know what it is, so make sure you do it. Rick, thanks again. I appreciate you. Peace brother. out, Cub Scouts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.